Hi everyone, I'm Donna Louise and welcome to my YouTube channel for the love of puzzles. Today I'll be showing you how I glue smaller size jigsaw puzzles. I actually have these two that I will be gluing. First, this is a 500 piece Robin's Burger. It's called Adorable Little Otter. It's for Wendy. She absolutely loves otters. So we built this jigsaw puzzle together and I'll be gluing it for her. The next one is this amazing, lovely Phlox brand jigsaw puzzle, 1000 pieces, Magnolia and Moth is the title. I recently did a video on that. Love this puzzle, had to glue it, I need to display it. Now the reason why I say smaller size uh, jigsaw puzzles, because this is a 500 and a 1000 piece, my approach to gluing a larger size jigsaw puzzle is slightly different. And I hope to be doing that soon for you on the channel because as you can see, I still have my white wall. And the reason is because the jigsaw puzzle display is going on until further notice. They love having it there. They love the antique world map. And so it's staying up, but I'm tired of seeing my white wall in my background. Um, I brought back my Lego dot map and I have a few other little trinkets here and there but I really wanna have something nice up on this wall. And this is the Graphica 6,000 piece vintage travel jigsaw puzzle. I originally bought this to put on the opposing wall, thinking that it would complement the antique world map nicely. I hope it does. But now it'll eventually take center stage on the main wall until that map is returned. So I have pulled this out. You can see pieces on the table but I've been quite sick lately and just feeling overwhelmed. Um, I'm still not 100%. Don't worry, it wasn't the virus, just a terrible cold that's been lingering for two weeks. And with all the browns, I've, I, I just got overwhelmed. I hope this puzzle will be one that I will wanna glue. Little bit of a spoiler, sorting the pieces, they feel a little blurry to me. And maybe it's just me and maybe I need to wait till I put the picture all together, but I hope it's as crisp and clear as it appears here on the box. And if so, it will be glued and it'll be professionally framed and hung on this wall. So that's the plan for this big guy. So let's just jump right into gluing these two jigsaw puzzles. I want you to leave a comment below and let me know what should we name this little otter guy? So when then I gift the puzzle back to Wendy, I can tell her what its name is. Leave your comments below. I know she'll love the fact that you all named it. But for now and for the love of puzzles, let's get to gluing these two jigsaws. So I have my two puzzles here that I'm ready to tape and glue. Now, the first thing is, if you are not confident in flipping the puzzle, so if you think if you're gonna pick up the puzzle and it might fall apart, like this one, then I suggest, you see I have it already on one board, I suggest you squeeze it between two boards and then flip it so you can get to the back of the jigsaw puzzle. And there you go. So first thing, if you're not confident in flipping the puzzle and that it will stay together, definitely press it between two boards and flip it just as I did. Now, <laughs> I was confident in flipping the otter puzzle. This is a smaller 500 Ravensburger one because it stays together quite nicely and I'm gonna press it. However, I had a little accident with it earlier and let me just put up a picture and show you what happened. So yeah, I basically had to redo the jigsaw puzzle so now I've lost my confidence about flipping this one. Let me stand up, go to the side. I might be out of uh, the image for a second. I think I can do it. So basically press down on the jigsaw puzzle, make sure it feels all nice and tight. And if you're able to, I'll be able to tell if I start to flip, go quickly. There you go. Okay, perfect. Only a few pieces came apart. That's not bad. Yay. Okay, there you go. So that's two different ways to flip a puzzle. If you're confident and it'll stay together, just press it all down nicely and just go for it. The faster you do it, the better. If you're not confident though, press it in between two pieces of foam board or two pieces of wood, whatever you have, and get to the back of the jigsaw puzzles. If I were to actually put these jigsaw puzzles in a frame, I would probably only use a lighter quality tape um, 
like a masking tape, a painter's tape on the back of the jigsaw puzzles. Because I know then once it's in the frame, it'll be squashed together and this would be enough. However, for both of these jigsaw puzzles, they're going to be mounted directly on the wall using command poster strips or whatnot. So I'm going to actually use duct tape, something a little bit more sturdy and a li little bit more sticky to make sure that the back of the jigsaw puzzles are well taped together. So remember, this is just what I do. If it's going to be framed, I use a masking tape, painter's tape, but if it's just going directly up on the wall, I'll use a more durable duct tape. Now, basically what I do is I like to run my hand as much as possible over the puzzle. And in fact, this one is still sitting on the board. I don't want that. I actually wanna slide it off and have it directly on the table. So wish me luck here. Remember the faster you do it, the better. There you go but you want to rub your hand and try to get it as flat and as smooth as possible. As well as when you're putting the tape on the back of the jigsaw puzzle, make sure you press down on that tape and smooth it out. So now what I'm going to do is I'll speed up the footage, but basically you're just going to see me tape the back of both of these jigsaw puzzles. I've noticed with duct tape or any tape that's really sticky, trying to use a pair of scissors, the scissors just get all goopy. So I choose to use an X-Acto blade. That's what I call this, an X-Acto knife. I'm not sure if it's called something else in your part of the world, but you get the idea. So that's what I use to cut. You'll see me, I'll go lengthwise and I'll just make strips and then I'll do strips at the other edges as well probably lengthwise this way, and then do strips top and bottom. And that will complete the taping part of this. So, you can watch that and enjoy. So I just did the preliminary kind of strips on the back of this jigsaw puzzle. Now what you're going to see is I try to always overlap the strips, but I missed a little bit here. Not a big deal. I'm just going to add a little piece here to cover that little section that I didn't properly overlap. The rest of the sections though you can see that I always overlap the tape. This is the section I was cutting and you see it's not very nice. So I'm going to add that strip along here on both sides. But also, you can see that some places I didn't cut it very well and I'm actually overhanging the puzzle. That's fine, because at the end, I'm gonna trim those all off. So it looks a little bit messy now, but it'll be, look neater once it's all done. Also, in some places, this puzzle, because it didn't stay together too, too well, the pieces were lifting up. And so I'm just going to smooth out all the tape and it's okay if you have little creases. I'm not sure if you can see them on camera. There's some little creases there and I'll just smooth them out as best as I can, but that's okay. They won't really affect how the puzzle hangs on the wall. So let me fix this little missing gap that I have right over there. The rest of it I was able to overlap nicely. So I'll put in a little piece here. I'll put in the strips on each side and then I'll trim off the excess and I'll do it then with the Ravensburger Otter Jigsaw Puzzle as well.
So I've taped the backs of both of the jigsaw puzzles. The Robin's Burger was definitely easier to tape because the puzzle pieces fit better together. Um, you'll notice, I think I got the tape stuck on the back of the Phlox puzzle. And when I tried to pull it up, because it wasn't in the right position, like the pieces came up with it. I actually had one piece fully come up. But I also had the tape stuck on the back of the Robin's Burger puzzle, but that one, the pieces didn't come up and it was easier to remove the tape. But as you can see, they're holding together quite nicely, even the Phlox one with just, you know, the duct tape on the back. So this again is my process because we are not putting these in frames, just going to mount on the wall. So how do I glue the front of them? Now, if I was putting them in frames, I would just apply one coat of glue to the front. But because they're going to be on their own, stuck to the wall, I'm going to put two coats of glue on the front. I like to use Mod Podge. And I actually <laughs> found this huge one on sale <laughs> because I you go through so much of it. Um, but it, it does last and it does go a long, long way. So I think I have plenty of Mod Podge for these two jigsaw puzzles and hopefully the 6,000 piece Graphica one as well. I prefer to use the matte finish. That's the one that comes in this yellow bottle. So this is what I'm going to apply because as you know, if you've seen many of my videos, I'm not a fan of glare or shine, and I feel the matte finish really makes the, the image look nice. And that's what's applied to my Ravensburger Antique World map that you often see on the back of my videos. Now, some people like to just use a gloved hand, like a, a latex glove or whatnot, and they pour the glue on the puzzle and then spread it out with a gloved hand. I prefer to use a brush. For smaller puzzles, I use a smaller brush because I want the brush to be able to dip directly into this jar. And most likely for these small ones, if I ran out of glue in this one, I just would transfer some to use this little jar. Remember, this is for the small puzzles. I do it a bit differently for my large ones. So I just like to use a smaller brush, dip it in the jar and apply I like the texture that it gives the image of like the slight brush strokes in the glue. It's not that apparent, I don't think. It's that noticeable. I did try once with a gloved hand. I didn't like it as much. I felt it, it was more wasteful of the glue, more messy, and then I, I didn't know what to do with my hands. So I do, do prefer using a brush. The only other thing that I need is baking paper. I don't know if wax paper would work the same because I don't know if the glue contacts the wax paper, what would happen. But basically, even though I've taped the back of the jigsaw puzzles, I like to cover my surface with baking paper, making sure the baking paper overlaps just in case the glue seeps through the puzzle and somehow gets through the backing tape and makes contact with your table. That's also why I'm using just this putty table. I don't mind if glue gets onto it. I would not recommend you do this on your nice dining room table, for example. I wouldn't want you to ruin it. So I use baking paper. And because these two pretty much cover the entire table, I'm just going to lay out strips to cover the entire table, probably three with a little bit of overlap. And then I will place the jigsaw puzzles on top. Is I'll give another good press down on the puzzles and make sure there's no fluff. Um, when I was taping the back of the flocks, I had like one or two dog hairs on it. So I tried to make sure there's no dust or hair or particles. And it may happen that while you're gluing, sometimes there's little chunks of glue. So I just make sure, you know, sometimes I'll use the, the back end of my brush to just get that little thing off. And then I smooth out the glue again with the brush. It doesn't instantaneously dry, so you have time. Now, as you're applying the glue, I'll bring the camera in closer and I'll show you. I go as close to the edge as possible and it's okay if the glue goops over the edge. I try not to make huge goops, <laughs> but it's okay if it goes over because once it's all dry and I apply the second coat and then it's fully dry, I actually use my X-Acto knife and I cut off any excess glue that's gone over the edge of the jigsaw puzzle. Well, correction. I typically ask my hubby to cut off the excess glue. So it's okay. You can get as close to the edge as you want. And you definitely want to fully cover the jigsaw puzzle with a nice even layer. You want to make sure the glue gets into all the cracks. 
I like to see the cracks between the puzzle pieces have white, the white of the glue in them. So that way I know that all the cracks have been covered. And yeah, it doesn't, um, I don't know how long it says to leave it to dry. It says 20 to 30 minutes between two coats. I typically let it dry maybe for an hour. It's evening here now, I'll do at least one coat. I might let it dry overnight and come back and do the second coat tomorrow. But yeah, I'll bring the camera in closer so you can have a close-up look. And I think it'll look really good on this black section of the other puzzle, puzzle for you to see how the glue applies. But that's pretty much the process now. And then, once they're dry, they'll be good to go. Okay, sorry, my battery died while I was uh, gluing the Phlox jigsaw puzzle and I had glue on my fingers because it was running down the side of the bottle and so I just waited till I was done and cleaned up before um, recording again and I made a rookie mistake. Oh my goodness, I've never glued two jigsaw puzzles at the same time and I stuck my shirt in this corner right here. Luckily, I don't feel any glue on my sweater. It really only touched for a second, but I was able to smooth it out. Make sure to always drag your brush in the same direction. Definitely in the same direction. So on the otter, I went this way, and on the phlox, I went that way. It doesn't really matter. Just pick a direction and make sure all your brush strokes are in the same direction. What I'm going to do now is I'm gonna let this sit overnight. It doesn't have to sit that long. In fact, you can already tell that it's starting to dry. The phlox is interesting because remember I said, I don't think this jigsaw puzzle is paper and someone recommended that it may be PVC and that could well be what it is. It felt different applying the glue. It like was smooth, like it just went on as butter and it seems to be drying faster. So that's interesting. I definitely felt there was a difference to the texture. But we'll let this glue overnight. I have to go clean out my brush really, really well, just with water, that's all it needs. I won't film this, but I will apply a second coat and then I'll come back. But I do not move the jigsaw puzzles whatsoever. Leave them on the paper, on the baking paper, wait till it's fully dry, apply your second coat, and then we'll come back and then I peel them off the paper and we'll see how much excess glue I have all around the edges. 
But yeah, I'm so excited. It looks really, really good. And I hope you were able to see on camera what I meant by making sure you get glue in all the cracks between the pieces. You basically want to be able to highlight all the specific pieces with the glue to make sure it's right down in there. And that's why I also apply the um, baking paper to the table just in case it does seep through, in case you have a crack between your tape. You shouldn't if you overlapped it, but just in case it seeps out, you know, you're protected and you make sure it gets nice down and glued in there. I have had jigsaw puzzles. When trying to apply the glue, the pieces come up. Oh goodness, that, that's a big, big problem. You can quickly tell if the puzzle is way too loose and you're trying to apply the glue and the pieces are moving around. That's not gonna glue nicely. These worked perfect. Just with the tape on the back was enough to keep the pieces joined nicely, no movement. I think they look really good, nice and flat. I'm so excited. And I'm just rambling now because I'm excited to see them done. So let me go clean off my brush. I'll come back after the second coat is dry. So it's the next day I put a second coat on and it's completely dry. It's so beautiful, I love it. Now, I'm going to show you, can you see how this corner, see my fingers gone up? It looked like it's bowed a bit. And that will be fine because I'm going to take this off and mount it directly on the wall right away and it, it'll lay flat. And even if it bows a bit, if you were to put it in a frame, it would lay flat. Now, Wendy, I'm not sure how quickly she will put hers on the wall. If she doesn't mount it up very soon, I will ask her to put baking paper on the top part of the glue and squish it between two flat items. It doesn't have to be super heavy, but just to keep it flat. But the Ravensburger one here hasn't really bowed. Just this one, this corner bit in the far corner. So now if we peel this up, we can see how much extra glue I had on the edges. And some areas, does that come across on camera? Let me see, I'm not sure if you can see it. There's a little excess glue right there, not a lot. Some little areas, a little excess glue. But besides that, it looks lovely. Look at that. Now, do you see what I meant by the lines in the glue? I'm not sure if that's coming across on camera, but I don't mind the lines in the glue with the paintbrush. I find it adds a bit of texture to it. And I mean, I'm right under a light, so there's a bit of shine, but trust me, this is nowhere near as glossy as some glue finishes. It's really quite nice, but there you go. Her otter's done. So I'm gonna ask my hubby to cut off all the excess glue. There's a bit there. You just have to use that like craft knife, exacto knife, and just be very careful not to cut the jigsaw puzzle. And I'll remove the phlox one as well and see, I bet you I have, oh, came up quite easily. And there's just some areas that have some excess glue like along there. Not too bad. I'm, again, I'm not sure if you can see that, but look, it's nice. It's glued, it's solid. It's gonna look great on the wall. Look at that. Is that beautiful? I'm trying to, just a nice matte finish, not too shiny. And I love the brush strokes in the glue. It's hardly even noticeable on this one because the texture in the puzzle. It's gorgeous. I can't wait to have it up on the wall. Both jigsaw puzzles are done and I'm so pleased with how they turned out. This is Wendy's otter puzzle and look at it. Isn't it adorable? Now I have a lot of light shining on me right now from all directions and there's like very little glare gloss, a little bit when the direct light hits it, but not, not hardly anything at all. It's just a lovely matte finish. I think it's adorable. I also already put up the Phlox jigsaw puzzle. It's in the hallway and because I've run out of wall space, I've actually put it on a door, but it looks great and I love it. And I'm thinking I really want to get their 500 piece jigsaw puzzle as well. Don't forget to leave your comments below, suggest names for this cute little otter. And because it's Wendy, go crazy with your names. Go seriously ridiculous as well as with the spelling. She loves silent letters. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. For the love of puzzles, I hope you enjoy my videos. 
please consider subscribing. And until next time, ciao!